Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Sparrow from the Warrens & Co. Museum again. By now, you're probably getting sick of seeing me, huh? Well, I have a lot of information I like to give to you guys, so that's why I keep posting these. Because Ed loved to talk to people. Ed Warren, Lorraine Warren, they love to talk to people, and I learned my gift to gab from them. And I learned all my knowledge from them, too. And... I just want to tell you quickly a story about Lindley Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It was 966 of Lindley Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut, near St. Vincent's Hospital. The house still stands there today. And I got a little flashlight here that I'm moving around trying to find the right light. You have to find your light, ladies and gentlemen. I learned that from, from Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson at the after party from Annabelle Comes Home when the photographer came around and said, I want to take your pictures. And... And Patrick and Vera both said, we have to find our light, Tom. And I thought that was pretty cool. But 966 Lindley Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut, 1974, was a poltergeist case. The Gooden family, Jerry Gooden and his wife, and a little girl, Marcy. And phenomena occurred in that house that you would never believe. And Ed was there with a priest, with Lorraine, of course, and hundreds and hundreds of spectators outside this little shotgun-style house. And the things that happened in the house, crazy. Television sets would turn over. Now, they had a little house, but they had little TV sets. Turn over all at once, two of them. Chairs would stack upon one another. Stack, stack, I'm sorry. Stack, stack, stack above one another. And the refrigerator would move out from the wall, 400 pounds, and f fall down. Uh, a statue would fall over. Cross, a crucifix hanging on the wall, dropped from the wall in front of a police officer. I have reports from the police officers. I'm not going to give you their names now, but I know who it was that I'm going to repeat a little bit about. He said he was on patrol with G4 or G6 or somebody, another, another car number. And he heard about the phenomena going on, and he stopped to help his partner. He went into the house. He saw a picture on the wall fall and break, and a crucifix fall off the wall simultaneously. And in his report, he wrote, I immediately left the house and waited in my cruiser for my partner to arrive. He was scared. And the cat that was in the house would have what is known as a materialized larynx. And what is that? Materialized larynx, what do you mean? Well, it's something, an entity of some sort, probably demonic, using the vocal cords of that cat to form sounds. And as that cat walked across the basement floor, it was heard by Ed, by a priest, and by some other people. And you're gonna laugh, go ahead, laugh. Hit the dislike button if you want, because you think I'm full of you know what. Don't hit the don't hit the dislike button unless you have to. But um, the cat would be singing jingle bells. Go ahead, start laughing. I know. I laughed when Ed first told me that story. I said, "Come on, Ed, what are you talking about? A cat singing?" He was telling, I'm telling you, the cat was just from an area from around the cat itself. You could hear someone singing jingle bells. I said, "How can that be, Ed?" He says, "The materialized larynx." In other words, something taken over the vocal cords. He said he's only heard about it in a few other cases. The uh, talking mongoose on the Isle of Man and the Tennessee Bell Witch. Why well, I keep moving their light around, ladies and gentlemen, because I really look bad in this picture, in this thing here. I mean, I'm finding my light, but it's horrible. I look, I look like, well, I am an old man. I am an old man, ladies and gentlemen, but I don't feel old. That's the problem. I feel like I'm like 35 years old, but I'm actually closer to double that. I'm almost 70 years old. I look in the mirror and I think I look pretty good. Then I see myself on a TV program or in a photograph or in a video and I look like, you know what? So, um, so that case was probably the wildest case because there was about 10,000 people outside this little shotgun house wanting to see the phenomena. Busloads of police officers who are on overtime were being dispatched by the busloads to watch for crowds and crowd control. 
And of course, at that time, there's a superintendent of police, Walsh. He shut the whole thing down, calling it a hoax. He said, oh, this is nothing but a hoax. He goes, uh, Marcy's doing it, the little girl. The little girl's moving a 400-pound refrigerator. She's making chairs stack upon one another in front of people and, and in front of the cop, the, uh, the items falling off the wall. No, I don't think so. And the cat's singing jingle bells. But he didn't want to keep paying overtime to his police officers, which, by the way, are in Bridgeport, they're pretty darn good cops. I know a couple of them. I know uh, Jim Myers and uh, the great guy, and Joe Zor. Real good people. And I know a few others, too. They're great, great cops. And back in 74, when if a cop had to run out of the house, man, that took a lot of... That took courage to run out of the house because of the uh, ridicule you might get from the other cops. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The supernatural realm is real. And it's nothing to play with. It seems intriguing. It seems exciting. When you watch a horror movie, that's, that's a movie. But if you actually experience that in real life, that'll scare the heck out of you. That'll scare the heck out of you. Scared the heck out of cops that were in that house so bad that there was nine police officers, Bridgeport cops, that knelt down in front of the priest that was there with Ed before they finished their shift to go home. And you know what they did? They put their hands together and they said, Father, can you bless us before we go home? Because they didn't want to take anything back with them. They didn't want anything attaching to themselves, itself to them and bring it back to their families. It's a real phenomena. Like, I'm in this museum alone. And people probably say, what are you in this museum alone for? You're crazy. Well, it's daytime, number one. Spirits have a harder time manifesting in day, daytime, though they can manifest in God's light. It's hard. And um, so, but I also know how to protect myself because Ed taught me. And faith is your main protection. Remember that. Faith, not anybody else, but God and faith to protect you from the paranormal. Ask for God's protection, ladies and gentlemen, and say it with faith and you'll get it. Behind me there, you can see an image of a, looks like a half-naked woman there. It's, it's a representation of a succubus. Now, what is a succubus, you might ask? Well, a succubus is a demonic entity that attacks the male. Sexually, physically. It happened to Jack Smurl in uh, West Piston, Pennsylvania, in the movie and the TV in the book, The Haunting, Haunted. And uh, it was an actual case in Pennsylvania that Ed went on with Lorraine back in the 80s where Jack would get tormented and attacked by a succubus, by a devil. And what's an incubus? An incubus is a, a demonic spirit that attacks the female. But actually, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you a little clue. The uh, devils and demons, they don't have a gender, really. We just assign it. As a succubus, we call it that if it attacks a man. If it attacks a woman, we call it an incubus. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sign off. Probably sign off of my uh, ugly mug. But anyway, uh, I may be ugly on the inside, but I feel pretty pretty good on the inside. So, hey. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the program. I am honored that you are watching this, this uh, channel. I really am honored. Because you don't have to watch it. But I, I am here to say that I do have many, many decades of experience learning from the best in the world, which was Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren. So for now, I'm going to sign off. And I want to see you guys see The Conjuring 3. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. It's coming out, hopefully, with this virus, who knows, hopefully September 11th, 2020. And I'm sorry that I never saw any of the movies Lorraine saw Conjuring 1, 2. She also saw Annabelle 1 and 2, but she didn't see anything else. She's not going to see The Conjuring 3. But I'm going to be there, and Judy's going to be there in her honor, in Ed's honor. So for now, it's Tony Sparrow signing off from the Warren's Occult Museum. Stay safe, guys.